is a month God made us understand is a month of supernatural release and race. Supernatural release and race. And this morning, I will bringing us God's word, which I've titled here as Understanding the Great Commission. Can somebody say understanding? Somebody's not talking here. Say understanding the Great Commission. The Great Commission. My text this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 28. I like to read from verse 17. Matthew 28. I like to read from verse 17 to verse 20. Matthew, I can take it from verse 16. Matthew chapter 28 from verse 16. Matthew 28 verse 16. Praise the Lord. If you are there, say amen. Studio. Studio. This is blunt here. Now, let's go. 16 says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain which Jesus has appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and where? And in earth. Can we read verse 19 together? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. This were the last words of Christ. If you want to know uh, how powerful an individual is, uh, uh, many a times they want to hear their last words. Especially somebody who is wealthy or within our parents, uh, you have so many children and they want to ask what was his last word, what did he say? Amen. It's so powerful to hear the last words of someone and Jesus did quite a lot of things during his earthly ministry. But this particular word where we're reading this morning from the gospel of Matthew chapter 28, this were the last words of Christ but Prior to what we've just read, if you look at it, Jesus was, you know, killed. They just crucified him on the cross of Calvary, brought him down, took him. Uh, Thomas of Arimathea came and offered his graveyard, and they went and buried Jesus in the tomb. And the Bible says from verse 1, like I used to tell us here, many a times you don't read your Bible out of context. You don't just speak a verse and you try to build a doctrine on it. No, you must understand what led to what you are reading. And for us, we want to understand where we've read from verse 16 to verse 20. We need to zero down again to verse 1. The Bible says, and at the end of the Sabbath, as it began to down towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and, and the other Mary to the sepulchre they came to the graveyard. What were they coming to do? The Bible says, and behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Glory to God. He sat upon it and, the, and his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers, those whom they assigned to watch over the grave of Jesus, the soldiers, the keepers, they did shake and became as dead men. I like us to understand as we proceed in these teachings that there are quite a lot of experiences that different sets of persons had. In verse 5, the Bible says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not. He said, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here for his reason. As he said, Come, see the place where the Lord laid, verse 7, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you in Galilee. There shall ye see. Can you see all of this? Different encounters, different experiences. That came all through, you know, the verses of scriptures. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, let me go back to our text again. Where Jesus said, yeah, in that verse 17, 18, there, he said, Go ye into the world. Now, the word go, in the Greek, describe a continuing action. 
meaning as you go when you look at the word it says go ye to the world go ye it didn't just say go go ye it's a continuing action so it's not a thing you just do and you say you are finished so it means that as long as we're still on earth as long as you still have breath in your nostrils it is an assignment that i've been given to the church that everyone had to partake and be involved in it praise the lord i said praise the lord it was the last words of Christ, like I said. How do I know? If you look at it, right even on the cross of Calvary, Jesus said in the Gospel of John 15, I mean, John 19, please. John 19, verse 30, Jesus said, it is finished. And he gave up the goal. So he made those statements before he was taken to the cross. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Now hear this. Just like a revival was not meant originally revival was not meant for the world revival was meant for the church say after me say revival was not meant for the world revival was meant for the church what was meant for the world was salvation what the world need to experience is salvation but before salvation can get to the world the church must first of all be revived hallelujah and for revival to take place in the church, then the great commission, the great commission must be preached. The great commission must be understood by every believer before we can come into this phase, glory to God, of talking about affecting. Romans says the annex expectation of the creation they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God as Romans 8 verse 19. The world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Until the church is revived, the church cannot save the world. Until the church is what? Revived. The church cannot save the world. The church is not a place where we expected to come in, you know, just to come and play our religious exercise. The church is not a place where we just come and sit down and wait for Jesus. No, the church originally was intended to be a place where the fire of revival will be, you know, strike, strike it for the fire will be ignited, then we'll take it out. Now, if you look at it, when these women, Mary of Magdalene and the other women got to the sepulchre and they had this encounter with that angel the angel said to them I know whom you are looking for I know you are looking for your Messiah you are looking for Jesus but the good news is that he's no more here he has risen as he said now go and tell his disciples who did he send them to talk to me he sent them to his disciples glory to God you see the church everywhere today the church is thinking about congregation is that not true raising congregation but what Jesus asks us to do is to raise up disciples so every congregation must grow from being a congregation into becoming what disciples of Jesus can someone say disciples of Jesus so it's not enough to say I belong to this church and you call no no the question is you can be a member of a church and still not be a disciple I'm not saying you should be a pastor no we are first disciples before any other title comes on board there are messages that flows from the throne of grace that the world cannot understand the people that can understand the language of the kingdom are the disciples that is why he said go and tell my disciples he didn't say go and tell the world so the disciples uh, must first of all uh, understand the message the message the message of the great commission he said go and tell my disciples that they should go and wait for me in galilee for there they shall see me can somebody say see me the word see me talks about uh, they will encounter me they will experience me sense of God uh, God has different dimensions of encounter that is meant for the disciples uh, and so if you are not yet a disciple of Jesus uh, then you may not be qualified to have such encounters 
You heard the testimony our sister shared? Now hear me. Hear me. There are some kind of things that happens to you that if you know who you belong or who you are in Christ and where you belong, those satanic attacks should be shot from you. You didn't hear me this morning here. Glory to God. I want everyone, let every holy anger come into your system and say the little demon that goes around and toys with the destinies of men and women they are not permitted to come close to me they are not permitted to come close the bible says for though we walk in the flesh for we do not walk after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal they are mighty true god to the pulling down of strongholds casting out imagination so we know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. But the wickedness that is in the world is not meant for us. Why? Whatever that is born of God overcometh the world. And this is a victory that overcometh even our faith. Please hear me this morning. Hear me this morning. There are levels in the church. You can have church members, congregation. But as long as you chose to remain as a church member, as a congregation member, then you are bound to experience what the people of the world are experiencing. So the assignment is to first of all what? Raise the disciples. We are not just to raise the congregation, the crowd. No, there are quite a lot of places where you could see crowd. Hear me this morning here. But you can find few disciples. I'm talking about disciples. As time goes on, you're going to know who a disciple is. You don't need to be a pastor. You don't need to be an evangelist. We're going to know who a pastor is. But if you look at it down there, even in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 in verse 3, the Bible is speaking about Jesus. He said, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. The word infallible there means undeniable proofs. I pray for someone this morning here, after the service, they came to experience undeniable proofs. Walk in undeniable proofs. Infallible proofs that no one will be able to deny around you. He made himself known to them with infallible, undeniable proofs. But the B part there is a speaking of the things pertaining of the kingdom. Even after Jesus resurrected, he was still concerned for 40 days. He was still talking about the kingdom. Can somebody say the kingdom? The only language you heard, you are hearing from Jesus when he appeared to the people. He was just putting in that, that impression in their heart. He was talking about the kingdom. He was so concerned about the kingdom. He was kingdom minded. Can somebody say kingdom minded? No wonder he said in Matthew 6 verse 33. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, and all of these things shall be added unto you. His kingdom, his kingdom, his kingdom. From where we read there again in Matthew 28, if you look at it, in verse 7, look at it, Matthew 28, verse 7, the Bible says, he said, go quickly, he was sending the women, the angel was sending them, he said, go quickly and tell who, talk to me, tell who, it is said, tell everybody, the question is, there are some things that you will never be told as long as you are not a disciple, go tell, quickly, Tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, what happened? He goeth before you into Galilee. Then shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Go and tell his disciples. There are some messages that is not meant for the world. It's meant for disciples. It's meant for disciples. Disciples here talks about close associates. Haven't you seen in Jeremiah 3, in verse 3, the Bible says, Call upon me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things. Great and mighty things are only designed or meant for disciples. Haven't you heard in Mark chapter 4, in verse 11, it said, For unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Because what's the mysteries? There are mysteries, mysteries of the kingdom is of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Why is it that most people open their Bibles to read, they can't flow. They are reading their Bible, they can read five chapters, ten chapters, but there is no light, no revelation. Why? 
they are not yet disciples. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. So the kingdom of God is a kingdom of mysteries. Only disciples can understand. He said, call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. Tell my disciples that they go and wait for me in Jerusalem. He said, dear, they shall see me. I pray for you today. Come out of the realm of just being a church member. Come out of the realm of just hanging around with the congregation into becoming a disciple. That is stepping into a deeper dimension. Are you hearing me? A deeper dimension, a deeper walk with God. Where mysteries are being revealed unto you. And that is what God is doing to someone in this house this morning here. He said they, they will experience God and some things will be revealed. Uh, all the disciples receive such things. Hallelujah. They shall see me. They shall encounter me. They shall have the revelation of me. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Look at me. God's intention for the church is not for it to be a dead place where some dead men and dead women gathered. Have you seen people come and they, some people come and sleep in church? That's to tell you what brought them. You are in church. The message is going on and the next thing you are sleeping. <laughs> so the church was not designed the church was not meant to be a place where dead men and dead women come together. It's not a place where people who have no hope come together. It's not a place where they say, let me come and see again whether something. No! The Bible says, for they go from strength to strength. Every one of them that appeared in Zion. For upon Mount Zion they shall be delivered. And they shall be what? And the sons of righteousness or the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. So Zion, it was meant originally or the church should be an epic center. Can someone say an epic center? Or it should be a hub, a hub where things are revealed to believers. A hub where things are revealed. You come in as a pastor, is ministering. The Holy Ghost is revealing things to you in your city. On that seat where you are, and what is revealing to Mr. A is different from what is revealing to Mrs. B. Everyone is just receiving, feeding. No one the jewel says in the book of Jewel, chapter 2. He said, Blow ye the trumpet in my holy mountain, and ye an alarm in all of my mountain. For the day of the Lord is nigh at hand. Jewel 1 from verse, I mean, Jewel 2, please, from verse, and number 1 down through verse 12 for the sake of time. It says, Sandy and alarm of my holy mountain. For the day of the Lord is nigh at hand. It says, a comment for it. It said, okay, next verse, please. It says, it's a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of cloud and of thick darkness as the mountains spread upon the mountains. But in the midst of the darkness, a great people shall emerge. Can someone say great people? It is light that will bring them, make them emerge. Light will bring you out of obscurity. I mean, light will bring you out of darkness. Where people are saying there's a casting down, there's a great people that will emerge. And these people are disciples. They will emerge because they have been disciples. No wonder in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 2, from verse 1 and 2, the Bible says, and this is the word of the Lord, whom Isaiah, Isaiah 2 verse 1 and 2, the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, that it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. But look at verse 3. He said, in the midst of it, he said, many people shall go and say. So the church is a place where people are attracted, not because they want to come and do religion, but because they are coming to encounter light. They are coming to encounter with insight. They are coming to encounter with revelation. He said, they will come here and let us go to the mountain of the Lord. Let's go to the house of the God of Jacob that he will teach us of his ways. Can you see the word teach us? So if you are 
not coming in with a teachable spirit, then you are not qualified to be a disciple. One of the proof that someone is a disciple is he or she possesses a teachable spirit. Glory to God. A heart that could be corrected in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5. The Bible says, For a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. And so that is what God intends the church to be. Not where we just come to play religion or we come to show the kind of clothes we bought, we come to show the shoe that we bought. No, it's a place of empowerment. It's a place of engracement. It's a place where we contact. The Bible says there are innumerable companies of angels in Zion. He says even the spirit of just men make perfect. So when we come in, we begin to fellowship with all of this spirit. We begin to fellowship with these great beings, this great sense of God. They are in Zion. Some impartation begins to take place. Some correction begins to take place. I thought I had have a witness here and so tell yourself this morning uh, it is a choice you make uh, whether to remain as a church member uh, or a congregational member uh, or you want to proceed from just being uh, a congregational member into becoming a disciple uh, can somebody say disciple haven't you seen even when Jesus was here on his, in his earthly ministry out of the 12 apostles now he had apostles 12 of them the disciples were the multitude is that true now before they became apostles they were first disciples glory to God and it was from the disciples he began to call apostles he called 12 out of the disciples is that true Praise the Lord. And it will surprise you that uh, out of the 12, he still had three that he was close to. Peter, James, and John. Out of the 12, there are things that Jesus could not say to Thomas. There are things Jesus could not say to Philip. There are things Jesus could not say to Andrew. Amen. But out of the 12 of them, there is one called John the Beloved. Can somebody say John the Beloved? That's the one that wrote the book of Revelation. So deep. Amen. Because he was so close to Jesus. Even at the time of his resurrection, Peter would be asking. He was asking John. He said, go and ask him. Because he knew that John was so close to him. Out of the multitude, he had 70. Out of the 70, he had, he had 12. Out of the 12, he still had 3. Glory to God. And out of the three, he had only one that he revealed himself to. And that is why John could write, he wrote the book of Revelation. Not every believer understands the book of Revelation. Many a time, some of you, you just stop by the book of Psalms. Psalm 23, Psalm 91. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want you to stop there. Because when you enter the book of Revelation, you need the sun in grace for you to understand what Revelation is saying. Even the book of Daniel, there are books in scriptures. So if you are not yet a disciple, you discover you still struggle with some things. If you are a disciple, no man of God or pastor can preach or turn scriptures upside down against you. Because you are not just a church goer, but you are someone who is growing. Can someone say growing? The essence of what I'm saying is for you to come to a point whereby you are growing into maturity. If I ask you now, look at yourself. This is the last Sunday service in the month of July. Are you growing? I didn't say you should ask me right now. You should answer it to me right now. But deep down where you are seated or watching anywhere, you can answer that question. Am I growing? Am I growing spiritually? Praise the Lord. There are people who go to church. Why? Because they say, if I go to that place, I will get breakthrough. Rubbish. A lizard in Africa will be a lizard in America. It's not possible a lizard in Africa becomes an alligator in America. So if you think you want to go to a place where they can lay hands on you or lay leg on you, then your story will turn overnight. No, it doesn't work that way. He said, and you shall go. Now, I know the thought. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 to verse 13. The thought I think towards you, said a lot of hosts. They are thought of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. But in verse 12, look at verse 12. He said, then ye shall call upon me. Who we call? It is the one pastor we call upon for on, on your behalf. Ye shall call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me. The word ye means you. Tell your neighbor, you are the one they are talking to. 
He said, and I will hearken unto you, not unto them. Unto you. Next verse. Look at verse 10. And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with how many? All of your heart. And what happened? Verse 14. He said, and I will be found of you, say the Lord, and I will turn your captivity. Hallelujah. So it, 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 it calls for personal responsibility. Enough of shifting your responsibility to people to do for you. There is a level where your pastor can help you. And the mission of your pastor is to see that you grow. That is why I say, I will give you pastors after my heart who shall feed you, who shall not, not beat you. Not pamper you. Who shall feed you with the word. So I'm surprised when you find people who come. They are coming to church. The church is just like lecture. You are going to school. How can a student be coming to school and he has no test book? The Bible is, is our test book here. And you have no pen. You have no jotter to write anything. How serious do you think you are? Glory to God. No matter how smart a student is. In a school setting. As they are teaching, your brain is not strong enough to comprehend all what is being taught. You need something to jot some point. You are jotting some point. That is how it is too in the house of God. As the world is going forth, what you are hearing you jot. There are some things you will hear direct from the Holy Ghost. It will inspire it in your spirit. You write it somewhere. Glory to God. That's a sign of somebody who is growing. Somebody who is going somewhere. Glory to God. It's not enough. You come to church, you heard the topic. Now, there are people now when I ask what is the topic of today, what am I teaching on? They say something great, something great. There are some by the time they walk towards the gate and they ask you, So, how was the service? What's the topic today? Say something great, uh, something, something, something. Can you imagine? That's how serious. Amen. I said, Amen. But the light of God's word shine through the heart of everyone. Destroying every dark cloud around you in the mighty name of Jesus. I say in the great name of Jesus. The essence why we are gathered here this morning, every Sunday morning or every service day. What is the essence? Why do we gather? Is it just to gather because other churches are gathering? No. The reason why we are gathering here is to make disciples. Making disciples for Christ. What do you mean by making disciples for Christ? Turning members into disciples. Say after me, say turning members into disciples. One more time, say turning members into disciples. Now complete it, disciples of Christ. Turning members into disciples of Christ. Not disciple of a pastor. Are you hearing me now? Now who is a disciple? Who is a disciple? You can write this. In Jesus' terminology, the disciple we are to make is a saved, somebody who is saved. In Jesus' terminology, in Jesus' definition, a disciple that we are to make is a saved, S-A-V-E-D. A saved, comma, baptized person who is continually and efficiently increasing in Christ-likeness. I take it again. In Jesus' terminology or definition, the disciple we are to make is a saved, baptized person who is continually, that word is very important, who is continually and efficiently increase, <clears throat> increasing in Christ likeness. Increasing in Christ. What do you understand by the word Christ likeness, church? Christ likeness. What is the meaning of that? Like what? Like Christ. Amen. Christ likeness. Do you know why they call them Christians? Because they were like Jesus. They were looking alike. In Antioch of Pisidia, the Bible said when they saw them, they couldn't differentiate you and they called them Christians. Christ like. But that is not it. Not because they were dressing alike, but they saw some uh, characteristics. They saw some habit in Christ at work in them. Please hear me this morning. Making of disciples will affect everything you used to know before now. It will affect everything. You see, when people offend you, and as a believer, you claim to be a believer and you can't forgive them. Hear me? No. 
That is not Christ likeness. Somebody may be your friend and maybe probably they betray you, they did, did something that hurts you. You can forgive them even if you don't want to continue in the friendship or the relationship. Forgive them so that your heart can be free. Because you agree with me, as long as you are carrying somebody in your heart, it will affect you. It will affect your health. Now, I forgive you, but we are no longer in the same level again. Praise the Lord. You were here before the person before, and he offended you, and you discovered that you can't flow together. Amen. I've forgiven you. Let the burden be taken away. I'm on a different pedestal. Here, look for people who are on your level. People who are going the same way you are going to. Please hear me. Christ likeness is not just bearing a title as a pastor, as a deacon, or there's a title, or you've been born again for 15 years. That's not the issue. The Bible says, for by their fruits we shall know them. So Christ likeness, we want to see the fruits. The fruits at work in your life. It's not enough to have the gifts. You find somebody with the gift of speaking in tongues, but you are fighting, quarreling. In the park lot, outside service, before service, you are cursing each other. You came to church to work and you are cursing people. You are fighting. You are keeping malice, glory. There are people you can't talk with. No, you don't look like Christ. That is not a sign of one who is a disciple. A disciple is one that could forgive. Do you know that Jesus forgave when the soldiers were slapping him? Even to the cross, while he was on the cross, the two thieves were there laughing at him. One of them said, you say you are the Messiah. Save yourself and save us. And the other one insulted his colleague. He said, you are stupid. You agree that me and you, the offense we are going through, yes, we are qualified to go through this because of what, what, what we did. But this man is innocent. And he said to Jesus, Master, remember me when you get to a paradise. And Jesus said, from this moment, you are with me in paradise. Even on the cross, he was still saving Don't say this is my nature. Uh -uh, no. When a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new. So you are now in Christ. You are now possessing the nature of Christ. Glory to God. So when I want to pray for the sick right now, I don't say in the name of Pastor Solomon be healed. No. I, 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 he said, in, I know whom I believe and I'm fully persuaded. I said, in the name of Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve. So it is in that name that I believe that the miracle will take place, not in my ability or my smartness. Likewise to every one of us. So it is left for you to decide whether you want to remain as a church member where you struggle and fight. You saw in Acts of the Apostles, the Bible said when the church began to grow, and there was Acts chapter 6 from verse 1. Can we have it please? Acts 6 verse 1. And there was murmuring between the Christian and the Jewish women. Look at Acts 6 1. In those days, when the number of disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrew women. Everywhere you put women, they fight. The Christian women and the Hebrew women, they were fighting. Why were they fighting? Because the widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Food. When you bring women to where there's food, they will fight. So I want to take extra, extra plate. Uh, my, my children, my husband, so they are fighting. But well, you took one meat. No, you only three meat. Why, why will you give me one meat? That's what they were doing. Next verse. Say, don't take. Can somebody say, don't take? Uh -huh, it's from the Bible. He said, Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto. Now, these, these were disciples, and they were seeing some funny, funny nature in them. And the twelve said unto them, and said, It is not reason, not what is not good, that we should leave the word of God and serve table. Peter said, I can't be leaving what I'm doing now to not be serving, to become and be sharing food for you people. Uh -uh. You people are disciples, so you should grow up. Next verse. He said, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report. Can you see the requirement if you want to lead in the church? Honest report, full of what? The Holy Ghost. Not this small, small tongue, tongue, tongue. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Next verse, verse 4. 
But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. These were among themselves, among disciples. But they still needed some qualities. Please hear me. There are qualities you need. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, make sure you increase it. Set your neighbor, increase it. Set your neighbor, increase it. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. What is wisdom? Ability to know what to do. Please, before they can put you in leadership position, make sure you have you know what to do. And in case you occupy a leadership position, be praying for wisdom on a daily basis. Lord, teach me. Help me to know what to do part time. Can I say this to everybody right now? The reason why a man is a head of a family is not because he's a man. Amen. God did that, like I said to us last month, for the purpose of administration. Because anything that has two heads is a monster. Anything that has two heads is what? Is a monster. So it is expected that as the head of a family, you should be able to give leadership. Say leadership. Give direction. When the vehicle in the Garden of Eden had an accident, God did not ask for Eve. God said, Adam. Who did God ask for? Adam. You say, Adam, where are you? And they say, I'm here. So God will ask for you. You are the one that God will ask for. Please hear me. To every man married here, what our wives are expecting, or to those of us who are into relationship, what a lady is expecting from a man is the ability to be able to give direction. Even if you're not yet married, but you are in a relationship, you see, a lady wants to know whether you know where you are taking her to. It's not enough say, can we be friends? And if you are so stupid that because your friends, they are into relationship, you too, you want to jump into it, to have somebody, you need to be smart enough as a young lady to ask the young man, okay, you say you're interested in me? You want to marry me? So, so what are the plans? What are your plans? Where are you taking me to? Glory to God. Where are you taking me to? If you're a serious lady and you know what you need, when you ask a young man such question, you can tell whether the man is for you or not. Avoid men that will be telling you, I have big plans. I have big plans. Where is the plan? I have big plans. There's some money I'm expecting. They are always expecting money. I have big plans. I will spoil you. I, I will confuse you. I will, I, it's already confusing you. Amen. But you need somebody. He won't tell you I have big plans. So, but the way he's talking to you, you can see purpose. Amen. You can see a man that has vision. Because my Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. A man that even if he carries you, or even if you're in a bus, two of you, you're in a bus going to Wimpy, and he's there. He can even be talking to you with the things he sees around. He sees a building. He said, ah, sweetheart, or oh, honey, whatever name he called you. He said, look at that house. What I have in mind is to build something times three. That thing you are seeing there. That is how a house is going to look like. Wouldn't you be excited? And you ask question, he has answer. Not they ask you question, you are angry. <laughs> he praise the Lord. They ask you question, you are what? You are angry. It shows that you don't know where, 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 where you are going to. So very important. God has created mad things that he wants to manifest in the world but he has a responsibility to reveal it to his disciples please hear me in isaiah where we read chapter 2 in verse 1 the year he said this is the word of the lord whom isaiah the son of amos saw concerning judah and jerusalem it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of the lord shall be exalted above the mountains and established above the hills he said and many people shall do what shall come to read verse 3 please uh, verse 3 can you have verse 3 and many people shall go and come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path for out of zion shall go forth the law and the word of the lord from jerusalem these women were the ones that encounter him from our text this morning 
They encounter the angel, they got the message, and that is why you see people who are doing religion, uh, they tell you that women should not preach. But the truth is that the, we, the people that brought the good news after Jesus resurrected were women. Matthew told us it was an angel. But when you look at the account of Mark and Luke, you discover that Jesus was the one that he called, he said, Mary. And when Mary now saw, she wanted to embrace him. And Jesus said, touch me not. Do not touch me. Why? Because I've not yet ascended to my father and your father. In other words, I'm still carrying the sins of the world around me. But go and tell my disciples they should wait for me in Galilee. As by the time he was talking, he said, touch me not. Normally, they, they love embracing Jesus. But at that point in time, because as soon as he was crucified on the cross, what happened? The sins, our sins, our sicknesses came upon him. So he was see, carrying it. And he said, do not touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father and your father. But right now, according to Psalm 24, from verse 7, he said, I am going now to hell. I need to go and recover the keys that Satan took from the first Adam. I came here as a second Adam. And so when he got towards hell, he saw the gates of hell and Jesus spake. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. What happened? And the king of glory shall come in. Look at verse 8. A respond. Every time you speak to some mountains, they will also speak back to you. And who is this king of glory? And he said, the Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. And that voice was not afraid. He asked him again. Now he went and said, lift up your head, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Look at the response again. You see, ask him. You see some situation you are praying against. They will still be asking you question again. So it is your, your determination and consistency that will wicked them. He said, who is this king of glory? And Jesus replied, the Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Glory to God. This was where Jesus went to hell. He went in there. Colossians said, having spoiled principalities and powers. He made an open show of them all triumphing over. He went into hell. He stripped the devil naked and he collected the keys. Can someone say the keys? That is why he said in Matthew, he said, and I have the keys of hell. In Revelation, I have the keys of hell and of death. I have the keys. I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind here on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you lose here on earth shall be considered lose in heaven. Glory to God. How many of us here now can truly say, I have that Christ-likeness? Christ-likeness means like Christ. How many of us? So you can see that it's not enough to have a title. It's not enough to come to church on Sunday. Some people go to church every day. Every day they go to church. Monday to Monday, to Monday they are in church. But they are worse than Satan. When it comes to fighting, when it comes to causing problems in the office, in the, their place of work, no, they are dead. But God is healing somebody this morning here. As I close, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, I'd like to read from verse 1 to 5. 2 Timothy 3. Look at the problem that is everywhere here. He said, notice also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perils, perils, perils. For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous. Uh, is it when we gave our life to the Lord, there was this passion we all had. That so many of us, so many of us not even having transport. There's nothing like transport. I was in the Bible school. Nobody was paying us. One year Bible school, nobody was paying us. We go in the morning, we close in the evening. Nobody was paying us. We were living by faith, eating by faith. Sometimes it's water you drink. If you see bones to eat, and we were so excited. We were still in the Bible school. Going out for evangelism, going out to minister with excitement. At times you minister, you give somebody your transport, your own transport, and you will trek it. They say, what, what happened? He said, I, I, I will trek it for Jesus. Can someone say, I will trek it for Jesus? But somebody now will just say, ah, this weather, the rain, the way the rain is. No, I can't tell fellowship. If you understand what it means, what fellowship is, then nothing should be able to stop you. Praise the Lord. Look at it here. He said, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Boasters. Proud. That talks about pride. Blasphemous. 
disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. The internet has helped a lot of, has affected a lot of believers that you find people who don't see holiness as something that is real again. But I'd like you to understand the same way heaven is real. That is how hell is also real too. You didn't hear me this morning. I said the same way heaven is real. That is how hell is what? Say to your neighbor, say there is hell. Uh, if he's not talking, talk to another person, say there is hell. Glory to God. Without natural affection. Have you seen people? You see somebody who has no leg. He's crawling with his buttocks and they are laughing. You see somebody crawling with his buttocks and you are laughing. He said, come, come on, see this funny. This person has no leg. <laughs> no natural affection. Truth breakers. How many of you have seen, uh, probably in uh, this natural geography or so, a lioness caught a baby of a deer, a deer or a goat. If you don't know what deer is. Or a goat. Even the lioness has an instinct that this is a baby. On so many, you know, account, you see a lion with, you know, after attacking and disrupting uh, a horde itself, a family of a dead. Probably they all ran away and they left the little baby. I've seen some, you know, pictures, some videos that the, the lion, the lioness will use her mouth and carry the little baby and begin to lick her body as if it's her own baby. There is that instinct that this is not mature to eat. And you find some human beings today, they eat humans. No natural is affection. It's not there again. They commit rituals. That is, is no more there again. Even dogs. I saw a video that a dog died. The other dogs around. They came and used their mouth. They were digging. The dog and they pushed their fellow and used the sand to come. Dogs did it. There are some animals that are better than, than some humans. Why? Because no natural instinct is, is not there. Without natural affection. Truth breaker. They go into business and they have an agreement. They, their mouth changes. Last night they say yes. This morning they say no. It's everywhere. Not just in the world. Even in the church. Most people you see rushing to churches. They are looking for where to go and make money. And you see them lying here. Lying here everywhere. Truth breaker. False accusers. Incontinent. Fiends. Despisers of those that are good. Verse 4. Can we read together one to go? Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Somebody can buy shoe, eh? but to get spiritual things that will that, that will you know make you grow, no, it's too expensive. It's too expensive. Lovers of pleasure. Man. I love this part. This is where I'm going to. Can we read together? Want to go? Having a form, it means it look like God. Having a form. So wearing tie and wearing suit and carrying Bible on Sunday morning does not make you righteous. You didn't hear me. So for those of you who know how to judge people, yes, your dressing matters, but we should not conclude. We can give you mark in your dressing, but let's wait for your character. Your character is what will determine what the total mark will be like. If they ask me to dress you, no matter how you dress, you look like the mother of Jesus. Out of 100 marks, I can give you 20. Amen. I'm waiting for your character. If character is good, then we give you 80. So you score 100. But you'll be surprised that when they try to check, so many people in church with all the Bibles they are carrying, all the scriptures they are quoting, 20%, some 15, some 5, some 2%. Two percent because of their attitude, attitude, their character, their nature. Ah, devil incarnate. But I see God healing someone this morning here. I see God healing someone this morning here. I see God touching your heart, taking that stony heart and giving you the heart of flesh. I see you having feeling for others, not being so selfish, self-centered. No. That was not how Jesus, you want to be Christ-like, then there are a lot of weight, Lord, that must be taken away from you. Some of us right now, three things the Holy Ghost told me will happen in this service here. There are some here that will need to repent. Repent this morning. There are some that will need to rededicate their life. 
and restoration will be the third one. Three things. Repent, rededicate, and restoration. Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet right now. Stand to your feet right now. You can tell that yes, if they try to mention, please everybody, stand to your feet right now and listen to what I'm saying. If they ask, are you a disciple? You know it that you're not qualified. You know that you have stepped on issues that have affected your spiritual life. And you are sorry this morning. You want to say, Lord, I repent of my sin. I repent of my offense. This morning you walk out to the front here this morning. I may not be speaking to everybody, but someone who knows that it's has affected your spiritual life, but you need to start somewhere and repent this morning. Run to the front right now. Come to the front right now. Shut the door. As we lift up our voice, everyone, go ahead right now. You know it that you are not yet a disciple, but the enemy has affected you, affected your life, and you needed the touch of heaven. Rush out to the front this hour. Rush out to the front. Put your pride down this morning and come out to the front this morning. Shake Ali. Are you praying this morning here? Are you praying this morning, everyone? A in the mighty name of Jesus I didn't tell you that you have killed somebody but you know that the things I've said I said some things about you and you needed the mercy of God the touch of God to come upon you that's what I'm saying this morning here glory to God you don't need to struggle with your spiritual life that is what you need to you need, you need, you need to be taught as somebody who is a disciple and until you are teachable you cannot also teach others because you can't give what, what you don't have. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Bow on your heads this morning. You are here this morning. You know you're born again. You want to meet with Jesus. That is where the journey begins from. Or you're watching anywhere around the globe. I'd like you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I'm a sinner. Wash me. Cleanse me with your blood. To serve the living God. Take my names out of the book of death. Write my names in the book of life. From today, I renounce Satan and all of his empty promises to serve the living God. And amen. Father, thank you for the life of these precious ones. I pray for them today. The whole of sin, sickness is broken in their life. Welcome you all to the families of believers. From today, whatever you lay your hands to do, you shall excel in Jesus' precious name of prayer. You are now a child of God. I pray that that Christ likeness come upon you right now. Take it right now by faith. Begin to walk like him. Begin to talk like Jesus. Your behavior, your attitude, everything. People will see Christ in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. And every plan of the enemy to frustrate your effort. In your heart you want to do it but there's a false fight in you. That hole is hereby broken. That power is hereby broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And amen. Please be seated this morning and put those hands together for Jesus. If you came to church, everybody, shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Glory to God. I say glory to God. So the great commission... It's not all about teaching, but also understanding. We teach and we come to the place of understanding that we are doing, we are practicing what we've been taught. God's word speaking in the gospel of Luke, he said, Give and it shall be given back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Running over, so shall men give back to your bosom. Now look at me. You should understand that whenever you give, you're not giving to a building or giving to your pastor. Whatever you are giving, you are giving to Jesus. You are giving to the advancement, to advance the work of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. So you give with understanding. He said, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall also reap bountifully. God loves a cheerful giver. Let's be reminded that today is the end of month Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. For those of us who have, probably you are born in this month, 
and you want us to celebrate you wherever you are please can you come to the front right now you were born this month let's have you you have something you are celebrating this month the month of july can we have you right now anyone stand to your feet stand to your feet everybody get your offerings your thanksgiving seed your normal offerings you have your tithe you can walk out or you want to make a transfer we have the information on the screen and those watching also we have the information on the screen you can do so and god will bless you real good lift up those hands above your head and water the seed in your hand water the seed in your hand thank the lord for the month of june and the month of july appreciate him for his help for favor for open doors celebrate him that lack and want ceases in your life in your home in your business in your career the works of your hand no more struggling financially again oh lord we thank you we give you all the glory we give you all the praise thank you for doing it lord in the name of jesus lord we come against lack and want we decree and declare financial scarcity comes to an end in the great name of Jesus, we swim in plenty, we swim in abundance. We decree that you rebuke the devourer for our sake. The mystery of Titan speak on our behalf. To everyone who is a tighter, enjoy the flow of God's blessings. And every hand lifted up this day, these hands will never go down. Accept this from us, Lord, and take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let's cast and sit, Richard.